As humans, we spend over a third of our lives either in bed or asleep. This also holds true for all the living things on this planet we call Earth. But after billions of years of sleeping, humanity still don't fully understand how do we fall asleep and why do we need to sleep. Sleep can be characterized by its two unique traits. One, sleep is accumulated gradually in state of equilibrium of sleep. Two, Based on our body's circadian rhyme and the secretion of melatonin and serotonin, sleep often occurs at a specific time of the day. Even though humans often require over 8 hours of sleep, we can only reach deep sleep for less than 50 minutes. What if we can increase the amount of time we spend in deep sleep and therefore increase the efficiency of our sleep to an extent where a 6 hour superior one is even enough to outperform our normal 8 hour sleep? With two more hours per day and over 30 days in a year, aren't we technically increasing the lifespan of humans without any major medical innovations? Hi, I'm Siwan and this is my partner Derek. Today, we're going to talk about how to maximize one's sleep efficiency. Where we got the idea for this project? We came up with the idea for our project because I am a late awaker myself, so I was constantly being awakened by my parents in the morning. Once with a disruption, I slept for 16 hours straight after a night of cramming for tests. This made me wonder, why do some people like me require way more significant amounts of sleep than others? Is it a genetic problem or are there are other factors involved? Armed with weapon of curiosity, we embarked on a quest to find out ways to maximize our sleep efficiency. Difficulties and challenges encountered and how we tackled them. Some obstacles that we encountered during the project occurred when we were trying to collect data for restrictive feeding and well as exposure to light during sleep. In order to complete these trials for restrictive feeding, we can only eat at a certain time, for example, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we also have to turn lights on during sleeps can mess up our daily schedule of calorie intake. So our next slide is about purpose. Our purpose of this project is to discover improved scientific techniques that can maximize the efficiency of our sleep. Hypothesis and questions. So we came up with these two questions. How can we reduce the time we sleep or increase the efficiency of it. Second question is, temporary restrictive feeding and exercise will increase the efficiency of our sleep while being exposed to light during will dramatically decrease the efficiency of sleep. Background information, different stages of sleep. The first stage we have here is REM sleep, which our body is paralyzed and dreams begin. Then we have stage one non-REM sleep, which in this period, we fall asleep, but we can still be easily awakened. Then we have stage two non-REM sleep, during this period, our heartbeat and breathing relaxes and our muscle loosen further. Then we have the non-REM sleep, or we so-called deep sleep. And this is the period that we need to feel re-energized in the morning. And it often occurs in the extended intervals during the first half of the night. One important factor we have to understand here is a circadian rhyme, which is a natural internal task that regulates the sleep-wake cycle and repeats on each rotation of the Earth approximately every 24 hours. To explain this in detail, temporary restricted feeding can reset the circadian clock in our body and increase the amount of gamma isotype protein canis our brain secretes, which can alter the behavior and the physiological run in the cerebral cortex and the suprachismatic nucleus. On the other hand, moderate aerobic exercise can increase the amount of time one spent in non-REM stage 3 sleep and the intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cell located in penile glands will start releasing melatonin, the main chemical that makes us sleepy, immediately once your core temperature starts to decrease. The specialty about having lights on can have a negative impact on our sleep is due to two significant elements. First of all, the source of lights can synchronize the cerebral cortex or to override the effects of protein canis by blocking its signal pathway. Secondly, melatonin, a hormone that initiates our neurotransmitters and our neuromodulators, can only be secreted in a dark environment. Materials list. Exercise. For the exercise part of the experiment, a cycling machine and a lifting machine will be used as examples of aerobic exercises. Other forms of example of aerobic exercise that will also be used to these experiments will be sit-ups, push-ups, and skipping ropes. Time-restricted feeding. Roughly 2,800 calories will be consumed every day. Other than allowed energy intake period for participants, participants can only drink 200 milliliter of water to maintain basic hydration level our body needs. Two different types of time-restricted feeding will be taking place. The first trial will be between 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., 
and other one is 12 15 pm to 7 pm exposure to light sources participants will be unveiled by strong lights throughout their sleeping period to ensure the effect of being exposed to lights is working participants cannot sleep down in a face down position method so how do we conduct our experiment one type of experiment was conducted at a time to maintain the correctness of the results and we use a scoreboard system, which the number can be ranged from 0 to 10. So for example, 10 will represent you feel extremely energetic and not tired at all. And we have five different factors to determine the score out of 10. The detail can be found in our project report. Analysis of results. So based on the trials and ex experiment, we made four graphs here. And the first one is the average sleep time for all participants for each trials. The second one is the average score for all participants in each trials. The third one is the average number of times that all participants woke up during the night. And the fourth one is the average time it takes for all the participants to fall asleep. Conclusion. Okay, so in conclusion, our hypothesis was correct. By restricting the food intake period from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., the overall sleep length was shortened by 35.33 minutes and the average time it takes to fall asleep dropped by 5.6 minutes when comparing with the data from the normal sleep category. The score of sleep quality also went up by 1.1% from 7.73 to 8.83. Exercise before bed has proven to be also effective when it comes to maximizing one's sleep efficacy. But however, we failed to observe a significant decreasing trend of sleep time from exercising 10 and 2 20 minutes data. But for exercising 30 minutes before sleep, we discovered a 37.33 minutes of decrease in sleep time, a 9.7 minutes deep decline in time it takes to fall asleep, as well as an upward elevation of 1.15 points in sleep quality. Nevertheless, the trial have also proven, however, an exposed light source while sleeping can be your worst nightmares. It will make you sleep 113 minutes more than an average normal sleep, 36.1 minutes more for you to take to fall asleep, and a gigantic impact of 3.51 points in the loss of sleep quality. What did we enjoy about doing this project, and what will be the next step if we were to continue the project? Well, one thing we both enjoyed about conducting this project was that while conducting the experiment and trials, we can awaken naturally instead of being waken up to alarms or parents. If there's a continuation of this project, the next step would definitely be finding more methods that can maximize the sleep efficiency or have the opposite effect. Where did you get the project and what supports did you get? Well, this project was solely conducted simultaneously at both participants' houses and we don't have nor got any support from any adult supervisors or mentors. 